I'm Yasmin Anen with the news from Bahrain Television. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the head of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau and Honorary President of Al Sanabal Orphan Care Society, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Vice President Chairman of the Board of Directors of Al Sanabal Orphan Care Society, Sheikh Adnan bin Abdullah Al Ghattan, and members of the Society's Board of Directors in order to deliver the leading GCC Honorary Personality in Caring for Orphans Award to His Majesty the King. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. شيخ عدنان القطان delivered a speech in which he expressed his utmost thanks to his Majesty for his reception and underlined his remarkable efforts in providing every care for the orphans in the kingdom. He also lauded the tremendous efforts exerted by Bahrain's government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the constant support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to orphans in Bahrain. He then prayed, prayed to God Almighty to grant His Majesty with good health and wished him every success. وما هذه الجائزة يا جلالة الملك إلا دليل عرفان منا لما تقدمونه جلالتكم من عطاء وبذل كريم لأبنائكم أبناء البحرين عامة والأيتام منهم خاصة فقد قدمتم وما زلتم تقدمون الكثير لمن فقدوا حنان ورعاية أبائهم فكنتم خير الأب وخير الراعي لهم بارك الله فيكم وفي أهلكم وفي أولادكم وفي ذرياتكم وجعل ذلك في موازين حسناتكم صاحب الجلالة دأبت جمعية السنابل لرعاية الأيتام ومنذ نشأتها في العام 1999 أي منذ ما يقارب 17 سنة على تنفيذ عدة أهداف ومشاريع للوصول إلى الهدف الأسمى الذي أنشئت من أجله إلا ألا وهو توفير الرعاية الشاملة للأيتام لذا حرصت الجمعية على أن يكون عملها احترافيا ورعايتها لليتيم وذويه رعاية شاملة وبفضل من الله سبحانه وتعالى شملت رعايتها أكثر من 2500 يتيم ويتيمة في داخل مملكة البحرين منذ ذلك الحين وتوجت ذلك بتطبيق مفهوم الاستدامة في خدمات الرعاية لأنشطتها وبرامجها ومن هذه البرامج والأهداف التي تسعى السنابل لتحقيقها جاء إطلاق جائزة السنابل للمسؤولية المجتمعية في مجال رعاية الأيتام بدول مجلس التعاون الخليجي وبالتعاون مع الشبكة الإقليمية للمسؤولية الاجتماعية والتي تعد الأولى من نوعها بالمنطقة الخليجية والعربية حيث تسعى السنابل من خلال هذه الجائزة لتكريم المتميزين في هذا المجال من شخصيات 
ومؤسسات وحثهم على بذل المزيد وتحفيز غيرهم من العاملين والمهتمين بمجال رعاية الأيتام فمن لا يشكر الناس لا يشكر الله صاحب الجلالة إن تشريف جلالتكم بقبول هذه الجائزة وفي عامها الأول عن فئة الشخصية القيادية الفخرية الخليجية المسؤولة في مجال رعاية الأيتام وبصفتكم الرئيس الفخري للمؤسسة الخيرية الملكية ورائد العمل الخيري في البلاد ولإسهاماتكم الجليلة في مجال رعاية وكفالة الأيتام في مملكة البحرين وخارجها لهو خير بداية للجائزة ومحل تقدير كبير من قبل الرئيس الفخري معالي الشيخ سلمان بن عبد الله آل خليفة ومن مجلس إدارة وأعضاء ومنتسب جمعية السنابل لرعاية الأيتام وهو امتداد لما تحظى به السنابل من رعاية كريمة من جلالتكم حفظكم الله ومن حكومتكم الموقرة برئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خليفة بن سلمان الخليفة ودعم مقدر من صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى لقوة دفاع البحرين النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء الموقر صاحب الجلالة وفي ختام كلمتي أود أن أكرر جزيل شكرنا وتقديرنا لجلالتكم على قبول هذه الجائزة الفخرية وموافقة جلالتكم بتشريف وفد الجمعية بشرف الاستقبال واستلام الجائزة سائلين الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يمن على جلالتكم موفور الصحة والعافية وطول العمر والتوفيق وقبول صالح الأعمال وأن يجزيكم مرافقة الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم في الجنة نظير ما قدمتموه للأيتام مصداقا لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا وكافد اليتيم في الجنة كهاتين وقرنا بين أصبعيه الوسطى والتي تي الإبهام أي السبابة والوسطى وأي منزلة يا صاحب الجلالة أفضل من ذلك وكفى بها فخرا وأجرا رفقة الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وصح أن رجلا أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يشتكي قسوة قلبه فقال له أتحب أن يلين قلبك وتدرك حاجتك قال نعم قال ارحم اليتيم وامسح برأسه وأطعمه من طعامك يلن قلبك وتدرك حاجتك هذا وتقبلوا جلالتكم بقبول فائق تحياتي وتقديري والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هي رسالة أقدمها باسم أيتام البحرين موجهة من ابنة البحرين لوالدها then was Saif Basim and Ben Ali delivered a speech in which he loaded His Majesty's directors of directing laws and legislations aiming at providing more services to orphans in Bahrain. She hailed His Majesty's establishment of the society and expressed her thanks for His Majesty's constant care and support. Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and Sheikh Adnan bin Abdullah Al Qattan delivered the award to His Majesty the King and prayed God Almighty to grant His Majesty with good health and assist him in achieving the best for Bahrain and for both Arab and Islamic nations. His Majesty the King thanked the members of the society and praised their significant humanitarian efforts of supporting orphans on all educational, health and social levels. He hailed Bahraini society's solidarity and expressed keenness to exert further efforts to achieve the best for all Bahraini citizens, wishing all the society's members success. Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa presented a commemorative gift to His Majesty the King on this occasion. بأنك أسست مؤسسة رسمية تتشرف برئاستك الفخرية لها لتكفي الأيتام البحرين وذويهم لن ننسى تلك الابتسامة التي ترتسم على وجهك الطاهر وأنت تستقبل الأيتام في ديوانك في مناسبات عديدة لتشعرنا بغربك منا وتسقط حينها, وتسقط حينها كل عقباتك ورسمياتك وترتسم حينها صورة ناصعة كلها حنان وحب صادقين بين الأب والأبناء والدي جلالة الملك وددت باسم أيتام البحرين في ختام هذه الكلمة أن أنقل لجلالتك رسالة حب من القلب لأنك قد أديت أمانة تجاهنا خير أداء فجزاك الله عنا وعن أيتام البحرين خير الجزاء ابنتكم ابنة البحرين 
ابنة السنابل وصايف باسم درباس البعلي والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته His Majesty the King received at Safriya Palace today the President of the National Audit Office, Hassan Jalehma, who presented to His Majesty the monitored financial data of the office for the year ending on December 31st of, 90, of 2015. His Majesty commended the tremendous efforts of the National Audit Office President, noting the excellent performance and the achievements made in line with preserving public funds and reaching the highest levels of credibility, transparency and independence. He commended the necessity of protecting public funds and monitoring ways of spending, hailing the role of the National Audit Office in performing this responsibility and preserving its independence to contribute to enhancing the performance quality of the state's ministries and institutions to achieve public interest. Following the meeting, Mr. Jalahma made a statement during which he said that he briefed His Majesty on the achievements made by the National Audit Office during 2015 and the positive impact of the officer's recommendations to improve the work of monitored authorities. He added that the meeting reviewed the officer's plans, expressing pride in listening to His Majesty's directives regarding the role of the office in protecting the state's public funds and reinforcing the pillars of integrity, responsibility and transparency in managing public funds. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa met at Gudaybia Palace today. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting reviewed ways of boosting the development process through expanding fields of regional and international cooperation. They affirmed integration among GCC countries is a way to overcome the series of challenges facing the region, especially in the economic fields. The Royal Highness has pointed out that the government continues to adopt initiatives that ensure benefiting from available resources to push forward the National Progress March in order to meet the aspirations of the citizens under the leadership of His Majesty. They asserted that the nature of the current phase and challenges require optimal use of energies and resources so as to reinforce Bahrain's status and preserve its security and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister received today at Gudaybiyah Palace the Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, the Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, members of both councils, and senior state officials. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness to help strengthen the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities in order to overcome political, economic, and security challenges. He said that the government and members of the legislative authority are partners in assuming national responsibility and pushing the development process in order to achieve the best interests for the country and people. He affirmed his continuous support and to facilitate the legislative authority work to achieve cooperation between ministers and MPs in order to provide high living standards for the citizens. His Royal Highness then discussed regional and international developments and stressed the need to cope with the economic challenges to maintain the economic march of the country. He praised the role of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in protecting the Arab nation from any interference and maintain its security and stability.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Gudaibia Palace in presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister. The Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa congratulated the Prime Minister for being awarded Flame of Peace by the Vienna based Peace Promotion Association. The Prime Minister is the first Arab Premier to receive the prestigious award for his role in supporting peace and strengthening human relations among all people. The Cabinet applauded the Bahrain International Airport Extension Project and the recent ceremony to lay the foundation stone of the new airport building. The project is one of the largest in Bahrain's history of civil aviation, which adds to the Kingdom's achievements and contributes to its economic development within the aviation sector. The Cabinet expressed the Kingdom's full support for the decision made by Saudi Arabia to evaluate its relations with Lebanon and halt its aid to the Lebanese army and its armed forces. The Cabinet also expressed support for all measures taken by Saudi Arabia to maintain stability and security in the region. The Cabinet congratulated uh, the leadership and people of Kuwait on the occasion of Kuwait's National Day and Liberation Day and offered sincere wishes for further progress and prosperity. The Cabinet discussed memoranda submitted by ministers and ministerial committees and approved a memorandum related to the establishment of the National United Procurement of Medical Supplies Committee. The Cabinet reviewed a draft law related to private training institutes, which aims to improve the training quality in Bahrain in line with international standards. The meeting also reviewed a memorandum related to cooperation between the governments of Bahrain and Italy to strengthen cooperation in the education field. It also reviewed a report submitted by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism regarding a number of economic indicators for 2015. It reviewed a memorandum related to the efforts made in requesting a renewal of the preferential tariff rates stipulated in the free trade agreement between Bahrain and the US. The meeting approved a memorandum regarding extending the project to employ and rehabilitate Bahraini citizens by employing approximately 15,000 unemployed citizens from now through 2018. This project would help to accommodate the expected number of new graduates entering the labour market during the next two years. The Cabinet also took note of a number of draft proposals by the Council of Representatives. After the meeting, the Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs, Aysa Al Hamadi, held a press conference outlining the issues discussed by the Cabinet. In regards to measures related to youth travel, the Minister pointed out that there are new measures related to the travel of those between the age of 14 and 18 for their protection from terrorist groups' recruitment in foreign countries. During the press conference, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid Zayani, said that the free trade agreement between Bahrain and the U.S. exempts the kingdom from quotas when exporting textiles and garments to the U.S., which is estimated at about 65 million square meters per year. He said the part of the agreement that includes these exports ends in June 2016, adding that the ministry is exploring possible solutions it hopes may encourage the U.S. government to reconsider renewal of the preferential tariff rates for textiles and garments as part of the FTA. He highlighted the report regarding a number of economic indicators for 2015. The report revealed that the gross the GDP for 2015 amounted to 11.62 billion BD, an estimated growth of up to 3.2 percent, and non-oil trade commodity value amounted to 8.2 billion BD, an estimated increase of up to 1 percent. The estimated value of non-oil exports and re-exports was approximately 3.5 billion BD, a 4% increase, while the value of non-oil imports was approximately 7 or rather 4.7 billion BD. And now we turn to business news with you, Mohammed. Thank you, Yasmina.
very good evening. You're watching the Business and News on Bahrain Television. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,174.11 points, a rise of 2.31 above last closing. The rise was in the commercial banks and investment sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 60% of total shares. 27 transactions included 959,581 shares worth 113,664 Bahraini dinars. And now time for sports news with you, Fatma. Thank you, Asmina. Good evening and welcome to the Sports News on Bahrain Television. AFC President Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa arrived to the Swiss city of Zurich to launch the final phase of his campaign for the FIFA presidency just a few days before holding the election during the extraordinary FIFA Congress on February 26. Sheikh Salman issued a statement upon arrival in Zurich in which he said the upcoming FIFA presidential elections mark a turning point in the history of the world football governing body FIFA and the beginning of the road to carry out real realistic juristic reforms in the organization to return it to the right path and pave the way for a promising future of world football in all fields. <laughs> 